that servant which knew his Lord's will, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Did you hear that? Stripes. That nigga that don't obey his Lord, that's his master, do you see? That there nigga shall be beaten with many stripes. Now, many signifies a great many. Forty, a hundred, a hundred and fifty lashes. That's scripture. Shalom, Yasharallah, Shalom. This your Ak Kudash Allahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I like to say Ka Hala Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiyak, Amanawa, Barakata. Shalom to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. Mighty Shalom to all you brothers and sisters that's laboring, pushing this word in truth and sincerity. Big Shalom to the elders of HOI. Double honors to the elders of HOI and all the righteous camps and congregations that sat there. Shalom to everybody. That's pushing this gospel across the four corners of the earth, man. Right? We are the children of the Most High. We are the children of Israel. It's time for us to turn back to our heritage. Right? So this lesson is a is a, a very brief lesson going into the Negro Bible, the slave Bible, just to show you how these devils oppressed us from our heritage when we came over here in the land of our captivity, which is America, Babylon the Great, uh, the mother of harlots, right? Spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt. Now, what these people did was they stripped our identity from us, right? And put themselves in our position. They stole our identity and portrayed themselves to be the people of the book, right? So one way they did that, they, they used the uh, Negro Bible, the slave Bible to oppress us, right? So we're going to go into it. This is select parts of the Hebrew so like your selected parts of the Holy Bible for the use of Negro slaves of the British West India Islands. Right. Introduction by Joseph Lumpkin. Right. So um, I'm going to be brief with it. Right. So the Negro Bible was used to oppress the children of Israel. Now, when you go to the book of um, Hosea, the fourth chapter in the sixth verse, it reads, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Right? So our people are destroyed because we lack knowledge. The type of knowledge that we lack is the knowledge of the commandments. So we are destroyed because of that. A lot of our people are dying by the sword at the hands of our enemies because we break in the most high's commandments. We break in God's commandments. Right. And he said, because thou has rejected knowledge, meaning we reject knowledge of the commandments. Because when you go and tell your people that, hey, you got to repent and keep the commandments, you got to stop doing this. You got to stop eating pork. You got to stop uh, selling your body on OnlyFans. You got to stop modifying your body. You got to stop uh, having an evil eye towards your neighbor. Right. They don't want to hear it. They straight up reject the commandments of the Most High. Why? Because they profiting off of their sins, man. You have a lot of uh, warlocks and witches out there that make good money off of being in sin. So they're not going to forsake their sins, right? He said, because thou has rejected knowledge, meaning knowledge of the commandments, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children, right? So Israel is destroyed as a nation of people. So as you see the first book, Genesis, right? Genesis has 50 chapters, right? In the slave Bible, it only has 14 chapters. That's 28% of the book of Genesis. Exodus, 40, 40 books. For, so like your Exodus got 40 chapters, 
But in the slave Bible, it only have uh, two chapters. That's 5% of the book. Leviticus, it has 27 chapters. They didn't even put Leviticus in there. Numbers have 36 chapters. They didn't even put numbers in there, right? Now, our ceremonial laws, right, and a lot of our um, sacrificial laws are in uh, Leviticus and Numbers, man, right? Uh, the law of war is in is in um, Numbers, if I'm not mistaken. It could be Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, but check out Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy has 34 chapters. They only put eight chapters in there, man. Right. And that's Torah. That's Torah. Now, when you go down to Joshua, there's 24 chapters. They put zero judges is 21 chapters. They put zero Ruth, four chapters, zero, meaning them, them books are completely excluded from out the scriptures, man. So we had no way to, to come back to, to our heritage. Our heritage was oppressed. Right. When you go to the book of uh, Micah, the second chapter in the second verse, I believe. It lets you know that these devils um, covet fields and they take them by violence. They oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. And that's exactly what they did, man. Right. And the list goes on. It don't stop there, man. Now you have Ruth was excluded. Samuel has 31 chapters. It only had two, two chapters in the slave Bible. Second Samuel, 24 chapters, zero. First Kings, 22 chapters, only five. Second Kings, 25 chapters, only two chapters that we was allowed to read. First Chronicles, 29 chapters, it only had one. And that's our history, right? These are um, historic books, right? These, these are our history that they're excluding from us, right? Second Chronicles, 36, zero, right? And Second Chronicles has that powerful precept in there. Uh, second Chronicles seven and 14 that calls us to repentance, tell us to humble ourselves. We, we wasn't allowed to know this stuff, man. Right. You got Ezra 10, none, 10 chapters, but none in the slave Bible. Nehemiah 13 chapters, none in the slave Bible. Esther 10 chapters, none in the slave Bible. Job 42 chapters, only six in the slave Bible. Right. So they excluded so many books, man. It don't stop there. Psalms wasn't even in the slave Bible, right? The book of Psalms wasn't even in it, right? And the list goes on. You can see how many books they completely excluded. Jeremiah, Songs of Solomon, Ezekiel, um, Obadiah, right? Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai. Zechariah, Malachi, those books was excluded from the scriptures. Now they had all of the book of Matthew, right? Because they portrayed themselves to be uh Christ, Yahweh. Mark was excluded. Luke was there. Uh only six chapters out of the book of John, and John was 21 chapters, right? They excluded the book of Revelation, Jude, first John. Well, there's one chapter in first John, zero for second John and zero for third John. Right. So all these books were excluded in the books that we did have. They minimized the knowledge that was in those books. But the most I said that these things will happen man, to us because we disobey his commandments. Right. He said these things will happen. Right. Uh, reading is vital to your salvation. Right. It's, it's, it's imperative that you read. Now, when you go to Revelation, the first chapter in the third verse, it says, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So blesses the man that read, man. Right. When you go to Isaiah, the 34th chapter in the 16th verse, it says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Right. We must read. That's that's um, that's critical for our salvation. Right. You have to read. And if you if you're not able to read, listen to the audio book. Right. And apply what you what you've learned, what you read to your life. Why? Because Christ said he come in the volume of the book. When you go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter in the seventh verse, he say he come in the volume of the book. It's written of him, man. So it's imperative that we read and these devils know 
that we are supposed to read. That's why when we be out teaching, we teach all the blessings and the curses so we can break these curses and receive the blessings, man. We tired of being under these curses and having these other nations dominating us, man. Right. When you go to the book of Joshua, the eighth chapter in the 34th verse, it says, and af afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and curses. So like yeah, the blessings and cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. Right. So you're not able when, when we was on the plantation, we was not able to receive all the blessings and the curses. Why? Because Deuteronomy only had eight chapters, right? So we wasn't able to read the blessings and the curses, but now we are. And now we got to call our people to repentance, man, because we are the children of Israel, right? When you go to Nehemiah, the eighth chapter in the eighth verse, it says, so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And that's what we're doing now, man. We're causing our people to understand these prophecies, these blessings, these curses, so they can so they could pick a side and make a choice because time is winding down, man. The grace period is almost over, right? You see China and Russia getting prepared to destroy America, man, right? Those brick nations are slowly decimating America, right? And you got to pick a side unless you want to be destroyed with your enemies, man. Right. Your enemies are, are your adversaries, these other nations. But the, but the arch nemesis is Esau Edom, man, the so-called white man. Right. So the most high, he, he cursed us for being rebellious against his word. And this was all we was able able to receive, which is something is better than nothing. But you don't get the uh, understanding this understanding in its full entirety when you only have bits and pieces of a book, man, right? So we was rebellious. So the Most High sent the nation against us from far, man. When you go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, which is not in the slave Bible, right? But now today you can open your Bible and go straight to it. In Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter in the uh, 47th verse, it says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in the one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And that's exactly what happened. We didn't want to serve the most high with joyfulness and gladness of heart. So he like, all right, y'all going to serve y'all enemies, man, over here in America. Right. Y'all going to go to them to them devils for everything y'all want. Food, water, shelter. Right. You want a driver's license. You got to go to that devil, man. You want something out the grocery store. You got to go to that devil. You want clothes on your back, food on your table. You got to go to that devil, man. Right. In the want of all things. Right. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, right? So that, that nation who he brought from the ends of the earth, as quick as the eagle flieth, is Esau Edom. That's why you look on the back of a quarter, you see the eagle. You look on the back of a damn dollar bill, you see the eagle. You go to a courtroom, everywhere you go, you see that eagle, man. That's how we know who the most I referring to, because that's his symbol. Right. He maneuvers like an eagle, man, like a damn vulture. Right. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now, when we got off those slave ships, we spoke Hebrew. Right. And they were speaking English and we didn't understand their language. Right. Verse 50. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of old, nor show favor to the young, right? Because these devils ruthless, man. The so-called white man, he's a ruthless beast, man. He don't give a damn if you if you an elder or you an infant, man. He's going to slay your ass, right? And that's just what he did to us in slavery. He, he fed our children to alligators, man. Alligator bait, right? He killed our elderly. 
because he don't care. He's still doing the same thing today by the masses, though. Right. Planned Parenthood, abortion clinics everywhere. Right. Um, killing old, older men and women. Right. Locking our people up, beating them to death, pushing them down, killing them. Right. He shows no mercy to the children of Israel. Right. So uh, when you go to the to the uh, slave Bible and compare it to the Bible now, you can easily see that we was discontinued from our heritage. And that was one of the curses that we would suffer, man. Right. Because this Bible is our heritage. When you go to the Apocrypha and Ecclesiasticus, the 17th chapter in the 11th verse. Besides this, he gave them knowledge in the law of life for an heritage. So he gave us knowledge of the commandments in the law of life for a heritage. This is our heritage. These are our customs. It say he made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. Right. But in Jeremiah 17 and four, he told us we shall discontinue from our heritage. Brethren, I pray you sing to the Lord a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them this written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen here, I got some business to take care of, and while I'm gone, I don't want you niggas to try anything. Do you understand me? Yes, master. Uh, listen, I, I need your full undivided attention. I've been reading this Bible lately, and it feel like my spirit been bearing witness. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, something about it, it just feel a little different. Mm. Moses when he talks to the Israelites But what he tell them it feel like we lived it Listen, cursed in the city, cursed in the field Don't we all relate to that? Yep. He said they get their sons and their daughters took from them And they won't have the power to go get them back He even said they be serving the enemy Have to get everything they wanted from the enemy And he will put that iron on their neck physically And keep it on them till they got destroyed mentally Lord have mercy the shoe fits. Prophecy is lining up with our history. Right. Moses said that the curses will serve as a sign so the Jews could remember their identity. Now I see why they don't like it when we read and write. Why? Cause all the signs in the book point towards us. All we really gotta do is put two and two together. We'll see that the Bible really for us. Hold on, hold on. Shh. Mass is approaching. Uh, he gon' see me as a threat if I ever get caught with a book laid open. He gon see me as a threat. Uh, for so long we was rocked to sleep. Finally I've been awoken. Uh, he want us thinking that we niggas Don't want us to realize we really the chosen We, really the, what? we the chosen Is he gone? Yeah. Cool, uh, where was I at? Oh, Deuteronomy 28 And you ain't even hear the best part yet Look at verse 68 He said the Israelites was going into slavery Put up on ships and get shipped away Don't they kind of ring a bell for you? Ain't that how we got to the United States? And what we got here? What we sold? Yes Men, women, young and the old? Yes Did we ever get to see our homeland again? No nope. Matter of fact, where the hell is home? It's embarrassing, we were stripped from our heritage Now we thinking we American Getting ruled by somebody that we better than They can never walk a mile in my melody uh, Now what you need to be asking me Is why is this happening? How come we the greatest nation ever created But they the ones getting treated like your majesty Well, huh, the reason why we living like we living Is cause we don't like to listen The most high made us to be the gods of the earth Only thing we gotta do is stop sinning Wait a minute Shh, mass is approaching he gon' see me as a threat if I ever get caught with a book laid open. Uh, for so long we was rocked to sleep. Finally I've been awoken. Uh, 
He want us to get that we niggas Don't want us to realize we really the chosen Eyes Kareem, now Masters Masters approaching he gon' see me as a threat if I ever get caught with a book laid open uh, For so long we was rocked to sleep Finally I've been awoken uh, He want us thinking that we niggas Don't want us to realize we really the chosen We the chosen